Welcome to this session. In the previous session, we looked at uh, digital uh, XOR based uh, phase detector under digital PDs. So, this is what we looked at and uh, the problem which we found in that X exclusive OR gate uh, PD was that uh, your VPD or the output of the phase error detector was actually depending on the duty cycle of the clock signals. Okay. So, what we plan to do is we plan to have a phase error detector which does not depend on the duty cycle of the phase error detector. Okay. So, let us look at it. Uh, so, what happens the other one is SR flip flop based PD and this particular phase error detector tries to overcome the problem which we had with the exclusive OR gate. Okay. So, here you have SR based uh, phase error detector. So, what I will do is I will say ok, you have inputs uh, R and S for example, here ok, this is reset and the other one is set, you can call that ok, well you can put it on any side and then you have Q and Q bar which I call let us say up and down, this is just a terminology. Okay. So, here what happens let us look at it, let us continue with our signals R and V I think that will be better. Okay. So, we have our R signal which is like this okay. and V signal is nothing but the same signal shifted by time if the frequency is same, you have been dealing with that. Okay. Time period is same for both the cases, this is R, this is V. Same delta T here, delta T here. So, here what happens is when, so let us say you start at this particular time. Okay. As your R signal goes high, your up signal will go high okay. and when your uh, V signal goes high, your down signal will go high and up will go down. So, it is like this goes high and up signal comes down. So, this particular uh, configuration, okay. it makes whichever signal goes high first, it will in uh, it was going to set the Q and Q bar up and down. So, here R signal goes high, your up goes high first and then when as soon as V signal goes high, your down goes high and also your up goes now, this is for one particular case. So, what you see and it is not susceptible to your uh, falling edge of the clocks. Okay. It is not susceptible to that, this will remain like this and this is going to be uh, in the same manner. Next again for the rising edge on up, it goes high and then you again get the this goes low, here you get falling edge or uh, rising edge on V. So, it will go high again and this will go low. So, this repeats at every clock period T. Right. Just for an example, if I uh, say that my up and down signals uh, or let us just show you an example, I think that is a better one. What I am going to do here is I am just going to interchange my up and down. Now, this becomes R, this becomes V, which means my up and down are swapped, nothing much. Okay. So, depending on which signal comes first, whether the phase error is positive or the phase error is negative, that will be decided by which signal here comes first. Okay. Now, for this delta t error 
for the same frequency signals. Uh, what is the average value of VPD? So, this is measured as the average of up minus down signals. Okay? And up minus down signals here, see as per the convenience I choose uh, whether I want uh, signals A and minus A or I want A and 0. So, here I am going to choose this as A and 0. Okay? Uh, you can choose anything which you like. So, this is A and 0 here. So, I know for this delta t timing error it is uh, positive which is A times delta t right and down signal it is 0 otherwise and down signal is going to be positive for t minus delta t this whole divided by t. So, what you see here is uh, this is going to be A times 2 delta t by t minus 1. Okay? Now, delta t by t can be written in terms of the phase error. So, what you have here is 2 times phase error by 2 pi minus 1 which is A times phase error by pi minus 1. Okay. So, this particular phase error, let us just draw this. Phase error versus VPD average or defined as up minus down average, right. At phase error equal to 0, the value is minus A and as phase error is equal to 2 pi, the value is plus A. Okay. And as phase error is equal to pi, this is 0 and it is linear in this range. And what you will find is as the phase error exceeds 2 pi, this is going to repeat. Okay. So, what you see here is as the phase error is lesser than pi, lesser than 0, you will see characteristics like this. You can plot it. Okay. So, let us focus on this particular part that between the range 0 to 2 pi. Okay. So, the problem which we had with the previously with the duty cycle of the uh, clocks uh, between which the phase error is measured, that problem is no more there. Okay. Then the linear range in this case has been extended to 0 to 2 pi. Earlier you had in case of your XOR based uh, PD, you had range 0 to pi, here it is 0 to 2 pi. What is the gain of the PD? gain k p d, well, the simple here, 2 a divided by 2 pi, you can say a by pi volt per radians. Okay. And there is no question on the linearity of this uh, average uh, p d. So, again, a digital block uh, inherently nonlinear uh, gives you a linear gain with respect to the phase error. Okay. So, if you compare this particular phase error detector with respect to uh, your exclusive or base phase error detector, so let us just uh, look at it. Uh, so, I will take one example. So, for uh, this uh, particular SR flip flop base phase error detector, you have, if you have R and V signals like this, I am just going to look at VPD and VPD is measured as up minus down in this case. So, VPD in our case, it happens to be in this case like up minus down, this is going to be something like this. Okay. 
Whereas, if the same clock period, if the same uh, same two clocks R and V were given to your uh, XOR base PD, in that case you would have got uh, so this VPD I equal side SR VPD SR okay and now I will plot VPD in XOR case. So VPD in XOR case is uh, this is going to be something like this okay there I use plus a and minus a other than that uh, everything is the same it is going to be like this okay. So the red one is VPD XOR1 okay. Now uh, what is so important about it? Well in the PLL, you have phase detector, right, followed by loop filter and then VCO, right. This is R and this is V, you can think it right now. This is VPD and this is V control. So, in case of XOR based phase error detector, your VPD is changing twice every clock period. What are these uh, two instants at which the VPD is changing? One is this, other is this. Every clock period it changes twice. Whereas your uh, VPD for the SR latch based phase error detector changes only once. Okay. So, if that is the case, it translates to that VC control voltage of the uh, oscillator changes twice faster in XOR based PD as compared to SR latch based PD, SR flip flop based PD sorry. Okay. Well, so what is the bigger problem? Okay, if your PD is changing twice, so let us just look at the control voltage spectrum. This, this is not uh, uh, accurately to the ma uh, to the number which I am plotting. It's just like what frequencies you are going to have. So your SR latch base PD will have the fundamental frequency as 1 over t okay and then you will have second harmonic and third harmonic for that frequency so right so 1 over t 2 over t 3 over t 4 over t and so on okay whereas what you are going to see for uh, this one is so by the way this is for we control in XOR based PD. You will see such kinds of with respect to F. I am plotting looking at the spectrum of the control voltage in the two cases. Whereas, in case of VPD XOR, the first frequency comes here. Right now, we are not talking about the magnitude, we are just talking about the frequency here. So, first frequency comes here, then you will repeat by 4T and so on. Okay. So, this one is V control for Sorry, this was not XOR, this was uh, SR, this is XOR, okay. V control is like this, okay. The same thing whether you look at V control or you look at VPD, same things are going to happen at VPD, okay. So now if you are having any loop filter between VPD and VC, two things will happen. 1 loop filter filters VC XOR more effectively
then sorry not v c but uh, v p d x r more effectively than v p d s r and simple reason is because v p d x r is having the, the fundamental frequency component in v p d x r is at the higher bandwidth okay that is why if, if you keep the same loop filter bandwidth and you give uh, v p d for s r and uh, x r case well x r case has its fundamental frequency at much higher at twice the frequency in case of uh, s r so obviously it will filter it more right similarly this is now we are we will see uh, or we have seen a part of it you have seen that the control voltage of the oscillator modulates the frequency of the oscillator so v c modulates output frequency this is something which you remember you may remember by now the other thing is the magnitude when it modulates the output frequency right so effectively whatever your oscillator frequency f out you have then you are going to have f out here it is 1 over t in this case f out plus minus 1 over t you will get these frequencies okay these frequencies you are going to get in case of uh, uh, sr based right whereas you are going to get f out plus minus 2 by t that is the first modulation in case of exclusive xor gate so you get these frequencies at the output and normally this 1 over t is not written as uh, 1 over t it is written as ff so normally you can say i am going to have plus and here i am going to have plus minus 2 times ff so the frequency modulation happens in case of your xor gate at higher frequency which in turn also uh, decide the magnitude of the magnitude of f out plus minus 2 f ref which we normally call as spur is lesser than magnitude of f out plus minus com f out plus minus f ref component at vco's output you can use the same vco in both the cases but in one case you will see that the magnitude of the unwanted component which is f out plus minus 2 f ref or f out plus minus f ref right in one case it is much it is lesser than the in case of xor it is lesser than the case of sr okay so now you see there is some good part and some bad part to both the designs the good part with xor is that the unwanted frequency modulation which it is which is done for the vco because of this phase error detector appears at higher frequency and it is more filtered okay so the magnitude is going to be lesser this is the good part bad part is it is susceptible to the duty cycle of the clocks which are used for the phase error detection okay so based on based on your uh, choice what you can do is you can choose either of uh, uh, you can choose one of these phase error detectors okay okay let me stop